Hey there. Thanks for joining today. I want to talk to you about a management model because a lot of the work we do with Sales Mastery Advisory Services is working with sales enablement, sales ops leaders who in turn are coaches for sales managers, directors, and so on. And part of their charter is essentially coaching the coach. And um, what we're seeing increasingly is emphasis and focus on first-line sales managers. And along those lines, many of these folks have had very little, if any, management training. And so what I want to present today is a management model that was shared with me, shared, actually presented to me by a buddy who's no longer with us, Tom Mulholland, decades ago, and I think it's still a very elegant and helpful construct. And uh, you start with four quadrants, and you have E, F, S and T, and R and C. And I'm wondering, I hope you're jumping ahead and wondering, maybe filling in the blanks yourself, what each of these stands for. But you start here. Uh, McKinsey Consulting did, had an interesting study back in the 80s, and what was interesting about it is they found something like 80% of the people on the job did not know what they were supposed to be doing, and so, which sounds sort of unbelievable, but think about first-line sales managers. Uh, what they did, what they found people were doing was what the people alongside of them in the same job were doing what the people ahead of them did, which in sales management I call victims of victims, or what they swore they would do different if they ever got this job. And the reason is because they don't have clear expectations. What is it that I'm supposed to do? How do I know what things are important and in what priority? And how do I know, you know, what my boss feels is my job. <laughs> so job descriptions may tell you sort of generally kind of what your responsibilities are, but in terms of sales managers, uh, you know, with pipeline forecast and with sales pipeline and deal reviews and with personal sales rep development, what, what are the right approaches? What's the right cadence and frequency? What things are higher priority and value, and so on. And there's a whole lot to be done there, but remembering that if 80% of the people don't know what they're supposed to be doing, mostly they're modeling or repeating what was done to them, and that may or may not be a successful formula. Which brings us over to here. If 80% of the people on the job do not know what they're supposed to be doing, my own observation is, 90% of the people on the job do not know how they're doing. And the reason for that is because they don't, they don't get meaningful feedback. Uh, there are five tests for feedback to be effective and meaningful. If you don't know what they are, please watch the feedback video in this series. I got into kind of an argument with uh, a VP of sales. And he said, that may be true in other areas, other functional areas, certainly not true in sales. I said, really? Tell me about that. He says, in sales, you absolutely know how you're doing. So I said, you know, tell me. He said, come on, man, it's quota. So if you're like 60% of plan, you're hurting, you're, you suck. And if you're 120 or 140% of plan, you're great, you're golden. You always know how you're doing it. <laughs> it. Good point. I mean, it's certainly val valid information, but it's not the answer to the question. The question is, how am I doing? 60%, 120 140%. It's not how I'm doing. It's how I've done so far. The question is, how are you doing? And in sales, the $64,000 question is, how are you going to do? That's what everybody really wants to know. That's what the bet is that's being made. And... I can tell you forecast accuracy is nothing like 90%. It's more like half of that, 
of forecast deals actually closed. So I'm here to tell you, and, and can back up with the data, most people do not know how they're doing and especially how they're going to do. They have a general feeling. So are they getting meaningful feedback? And again, if, if you want to know the other criteria or the five criteria, please check out that, uh, that video. Okay, now, if performance does not equal expectations, then is it a systems problem or a training problem? Most often, when performance does not equal expectations, it's like, we got to get these folks trained up. They don't know how to do it. And that may, in fact, be true. But often, it is not. Okay? So here's a training problem. Uh, I want you to uh, call higher in an organization and not be pushing our products, but talking to them about their needs and their solutions and their pains and then relating our products to it. Okay, That's what I want you to do. It's like, great. If you hold a gun to my head and say, do that, and I say, okay, I understand what you want me to do. I don't know how to do that. That's a training problem. Okay? But if what you say instead is, I hold a gun to your head, my head, you will... <laughs> You hold a gun to my head, whatever, say do that, and the person says, look, maybe you'd be doing me a favor, just pull the trigger, man. I don't know. What do you want me to do? You want me to call high and do this solution thing, or do you want me to go out and chase new logos? What's this month special? Just tell me, okay, and I'll go. That's not a training problem. The person's not saying, I don't know how to do it. They're saying, I don't know what you want me to do now. That's a systems problem, Okay. So not every deficiency here is a training issue. Often, and I, I actually want to say more often than not, it's a systems or priority problem. The final piece is, okay, great, when we come this way, what are the rewards and consequences? What good, bad happens if I do it? What good, bad happens if I don't do it? And more often than not, the answer is not much. If you call high and do these things, great. If you don't call high, but you know uh, you make your number or you seem like you're getting along, okay. Or you don't call high and you're not making your number, but uh, you still get your base, and you know you aren't. There's no particular accountability or transparency. I mean, it's like not much, and that's how this whole thing breaks down. Now, how does it not break down? How does it build up? And the answer is start with clear expectations. You know, KPIs, priorities, here's how we're measuring and so on. Provide meaningful feedback that meet the five tests. And again, I invite you to go there. If this isn't happening, start looking at the cause. Why is it not happening? Why do we keep falling down in these areas and specifically what areas? And is that a systems problem? People are getting conflicting mixed messages. Or is it a training problem? They literally do not know how to do it. And if that's the case, take a look at our practice video because that's a whole other uh, area of, of need and improvement. And finally, let's look at the rewards and consequences. And it's not just compensation, of course that's part of it, but what else? Recognition and uh, what my partner Jim likes to call a carrot-shaped stick what are the consequences of not doing the things that we're really wanting you to do? So I think it's a helpful model. See what you think. If you have any questions, by all means, shoot them over to us. We'll try and get them answered. Thanks for watching.